I want a salad with chicken on it. Here's a lesson learned. Feel the fury that told that girl with a boy. Hey, this is Joey Cape. You're watching Punk World Views. All right. Your 2004 split with Tony, the first solo project that you did. Yes. Okay. I never wanted to do solo stuff because my band in the earliest days of the band, when somebody had a bad idea, somebody would say it's a solo project. You know, so there's always kind of a <laughs> negative connotation to the idea of going solo. Okay. And I still, the word still makes me cringe when I hear it. No, it's right. okay, but I hear it and I go, solo. Is that what it is? I like to call it. Sorry, there's no other it? word. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, I never had the desire to do that, but, you know, I. I thing is I've always written on an acoustic guitar so it's natural at some point you've recorded so many demos for your bands on acoustic and you know people hear them and then maybe some people say I really like the acoustic versions of the song and, you know it, that's what happens to guys like me and Tommy Sly right. and many many other people is that, that are in bands for a long time it's, it's like a timing thing too I mean I think you know I don't know there's an acceptance that came with that too at the same time or something. Some people start, and now everybody does it because of the industry. You know, like it's an easier way to tour. It's cheaper. So you were ahead of the curve. I, well, you know, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say that, but now that you mentioned it, okay, I said it. I usually fine. am. Uh, well, does anybody ever call you Randall? Yeah. Um, you and your mom? No, my mom and dad don't call me Randall. No, no one in my family calls me Randall. It ranges from Joe to Joey to Joseph. Uh, Randall is a name that Lagwagon fans tend to call me. Okay. You know, because I think we have some songs. Yes. Just a little. A little bit, <laughs> yeah. I, I like to refer to myself in third person. The capers tuck. <laughs> Randall needs something to eat. You know, I what about it's J funny JC? To me. Like... Uh, no, I didn't get that too much, okay. but I often type that in emails. So. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, Randall, it seems like it's only people that are really drunk at shows that want to hear me play Stoke and the Neighbors on acoustic. Randall! They're writing it down right now because they want to yeah. sing that song. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> Have you ever considered a Bad Astronaut reunion, like a tour or anything? We did one, uh, we did four shows in California, um, almost full on. I mean, I played acoustic, it was, uh, and we used mostly percussion instead of drums. Just a few months ago, oh, and we're actually rehearsing. Sure. We're actually rehearsing now uh -huh. for a Canada tour. Oh, cool. um, so no plans to play songs, right? In your solo act? I do, yeah. But we're actually doing the full band now, and it's. I can't say enough about how fun it is. I mean, it's like it's those songs. Are, yeah, does that, <laughs> can we turn it up? You guys hear the harmonica? I don't think it's loud enough. That's by the way, just so you people know, watching this. That's downstairs, like, speakers like a mile away from here, so yeah. it cannot be fun to be down there. Look, they're going to be deaf in 17 minutes. I know. Thanks. Duncan Redmonds. It's Duncan Redmonds. He's great. He's a singer of an English band called Snuff, and he does a lot of acoustic stuff, and it's really... Is this his acoustic? Yeah, it's very folky. I tour with him a lot, and he's a great guy. He's just an amazing musician. Well, enough about... What was his name? Duncan Redmonds. <laughs> Come on! We're Sorry. talking my bros. Okay. Um, well, you have dabbled in producing. Um, do well, you, are you still producing any records or planning to produce any? I mean, uh, no. I mean, I'm always open to the idea, but I just... I, you know, I just never have time. Was well, it something that you, you tried and you weren't that into it, or you just don't have time? It, I, there was a point in my life where... I started a record label, and when I started a rec record label, I had this theory that if I, I found bands that basically no one knew, and if I could, you know, demos I liked, and then I produced the records and paid for it, that I could sort of, by having a record label, work my way into the producing thing, because I'd been in the, working in the studio for so long that I really, you know, felt I knew my way around, and I'm happy, in the I love being in the studio. So it was a point in my life where I started producing records, and, um, you know, it's just, it's like anything else. It's really competitive and really uh, time consuming. And it, I think to be successful, you have to do a lot of things that your heart's not in. Unless you get really successful, then you can choose. 
it's just like anything else, being a filmmaker or whatever, you don't get to choose what you do for work. So if you do it, you have to do it full on and you're gonna have to do a lot of stuff you don't like. Right. And I wasn't willing to do that. <laughs> there's probably a lot of soul selling and producing. I think there's everything, you know, it's like that's the way it is. The only thing that you fall back to that doesn't have any of that is just be playing. Right. Being an artist or whatever, you know. Well, you've been with Fat Records for a really long time, like 20 years. Don't want to make you sound old. No, no, I'm old. <laughs> I'm very old. Um, what do you? Uh, yeah. What do you credit um, that kind of loyalty to? Um, it's easy, you know. Uh, that, that's an easy question to answer. When you, I have heard horror story after horror story from different people, uh, and you know, just in different situations. Mostly in the early years, people that were on major labels. Uh, most indie labels seem to be slightly more honest, and I think there's just less bureaucracy and less stuff to cut through, less people. But with Fat, from the earliest time, I mean, you know, when we signed to Fat, there were really like just two or three, there was Mike and Aaron and like one other person, and uh, actually it was the trash boy. I, I, I worked at Fat when my little really? band first signed to the label, I was the guy who took out the trash and stuff, and there was only four of us, and then there were five. And so over the years, every time they add someone new, it tends to be somebody that I already know, because mm -hmm. I live in the city where the label is, and right. you just, if you have a thing where there's a direct kind of a family relationship with your label, and business becomes completely transparent, you just can't beat that. Right? When so you sign to them though, do they have to hire somebody else to take out the trash, or do you like record, and they're like, take out uh, the trash? I actually quit. I, I, oh, I, I threw the trash down one day and said, I'm like, <laughs> it's a really funny story that they actually really? bring up every once in a while. Yeah, they go, remember when you quit? Remember how you threw the trash over and said, I'm not Were they still paying you though? Well, like... I was supposed to be doing other things, but I just kind of ended up being like, you know, guy taking out the trash and stuff. And I think I had a bad hangover one day and I got mad and just quit. Like... That's the kind of relationship that we've always right. had with them. I and mean, it's, you know, Mike and Aaron are two of my closest friends for the mm -hmm. entire time that I've known them, so. Good. That's, that would be a reason for loyalty. For yeah. Sure. So it's easy. Well, are you all? Are you still active with me? First thing, the Gimme Gimme's. Like, are you all doing anything? Um, yeah, we do stuff. You know, a couple, maybe once or twice a year, we do okay. something when people's schedules are clear. Mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, we're in Australia. I think in September we're going to Japan. But well, now you don't. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think the way the Japanese are, they're so amazing in recovery that. And just organization that we probably will go. Yeah, but boy, it's, it's like hard to even say <laughs> that. But anyway, yeah, so we do. Okay. And we record. We recorded a. We did an Australian EP mm -hmm. before we went to Australia. Live or? Uh, no, we actually just made a oh, five like, song record oh. of covers. You know, they're always yeah. covers uh, by Australian artists. And we're oh. supposedly in a month or something recording a Japanese one. You're a busy And man. it's not like you can go. I mean, I don't feel like I'm leaking anything because you would not know the artist because I don't either. Right. You know what I mean? They're J-pop people. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, um, we're doing, you know, Usago, you know, like, it's amazing. But, you know. Oh, he's my favorite. Yeah. I was so bad. <laughs> I'm, like, listening, I I was listening to I'm so lame, right I couldn't here. even come up with anything cool. Like, I was okay. trying to think of how you say cherry blossom. You know. All right, well, how... How different is it touring with your solo stuff compared to when you were touring with Lagwagon? Is it like completely different? Yeah. Um, well, mainly, um, you, you know, when you're not playing with a band, you have total control. Mm -hmm. um, you can control the dynamic, you can control the speed, the key, you can change, move a capo around, play a song any way you want, depending on the mood you're in. And so you, there's a lot more emotion, emotional possibilities. Um, which sounds backwards to a lot of people because they think it's more dynamic, more dynamic. Right? It's just not true. So it's it's very cool as a songwriter to do acoustic shows and to be a little bit less married to the. You know, when you're playing with a band, you're playing with all these other people, and there has to be chemistry and there has to be synchronicity. And so you kind of play into a roadmap, and uh, they're both great. But that's why I have a band with me now because I've been doing right. three years of these acoustic shows, and I'm like, oh, I'm fucking rock, man. Been kind of bored. So you, but you started off just you and a guitar, and now you have like full on well, people with you. Well, recently this band is brand new. I mean, we okay. just learned the songs like literally like the day before we uh, went on the 
we started the tour two days ago. Um, last night we played the songs pretty well, so I think tonight will be. Well, I've been in shows fire. lately, and bands will tell kids to steal all their albums. Yeah, you know see, I, mean? it's like, that's lame. I mean, the thing is, okay, what what people didn't understand about I think a lot of people think that it's really cool to say stuff like that, right? And it's like. Okay, that's cool, you know, Johnny Outlaw, like, yeah, like you're so cool, you don't care because you live at your parents' house still, you don't have a kid, and you, don't right. have, you know what I mean? But I, yeah, and ideally, you know, people that make music would be making money for making music, you know, but it's the way it went. The, uh, there are upsides and downsides to it. It's certainly a lot harder to make a living playing music if you're not Britney Spears, which is a bad thing, because... Right. Good art should be subsidized. I mean, we want it. The upside of it is that it, it weeded out a lot of people that shouldn't be doing it anyway. I think. Yeah. I think the quality of music has actually seen a boost. Wait, so you don't prefer one over the other? I, I don't. I just like to switch it up. It's nice. um, well, what is next after this? What is your next... Um, well, next this tour ends in Colorado, and this band that I have now is going to record the songs that we're playing. Um, uh, and some more. We're making a record. And it's basically just songs made uh, from my two solo albums, my full lengths. We're doing songs off those, but with band versions, you know, more rocking or whatever. And, uh, the, I mean, it just, I don't think it on. I mean, I just have to give So you're just you non stop, know. like? I never stop. I'm kind of, you know, it's like my job. I mean, right. it, everybody goes to work every day. I just keep touring and making records. You have to do that you now. I mean, you, know, you have to tour a lot more than you used to. Nobody's selling for good stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of downsides. I don't like to think about them. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't think at all. Just roll in denial. <laughs> roll with the This is the life. <laughs> it is, it's, uh, I, I would never complain though, because my situation, is, of course, is different. I, I had, a, I've had a great run, you know what I mean? Right. It's all been good, and I'm still doing okay. You know what I mean? You're still doing okay. I'm, I'm making ends meet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which most people can't say, so I feel blessed without the religious aspect. <laughs> Fish is not a vegetable. You're not fucking. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Empires crash down to get. And uh, ice tea.